Hello everybody, today we're going to cover DNA mutations. So why is this relevant? Well, DNA mutations are commonly tested in US Assembly Step 1 because they are the basis for many human diseases. A basic understanding of DNA mutations as well as the associated terminology is essential for understanding other Step 1 topics such as DNA repair mechanisms, cell cycle regulation, and neoplasia. So let's get started with the basics. DNA mutations are changes in the genetic code. DNA mutations can have no consequences or they can have extremely severe consequences depending on where the mutation occurs. DNA mutations are also the basis for carcinogenesis and neoplasia. So what causes DNA mutations? Well, DNA mutations can occur randomly or they can occur due to exposure to a mutagen such as radiation or certain chemicals. Random DNA mutations usually occur as a result of errors in DNA replication. Although various mechanisms exist to prevent this, including DNA polymerase proofreading and DNA repair mechanisms, random mutations do occur at a very low rate. Problems with DNA repair mechanisms can lead to various disorders which increase predisposition to cancer. Syndromes associated with problems in DNA repair mechanisms include Lynch syndrome, xeroderma pigmentosum, ataxia telangiectasia, and Lee-Fromeni syndrome. Because of the faulty DNA repair mechanisms, the rate of random mutations is increased in patients with these conditions. This is why all of these conditions lead to an increased risk of cancer and neoplasia. DNA mutations can be classified based on the size of the change in DNA. Single nucleotide changes are called point mutations. Large nucleotide changes usually alter the structure of entire chromosomes, therefore they are called structural mutations. We will begin our discussion with point mutations. Point mutations refer to single nucleotide changes in the DNA sequence. Point mutations are classified based on what effect they have on protein function. There are three types of point mutations. These are silent mutations, missense mutations, and nonsense mutations. First, let's talk about silent mutations. Silent mutations occur when a single nucleotide change does not result in a change in the amino acid sequence of a protein. This is possibly because of codon degeneracy. We will talk more about codon degeneracy in future lectures, but in a nutshell, codon degeneracy refers to the principle that many different codons can code for the same amino acid. For example, the codons CUU, CUC, CUA, CUG, UUA, and UUG all code for the same amino acid, leucine. The next type of point mutation we will talk about are missense mutations. A missense mutation recurs when a single nucleotide change results in a change in the amino acid sequence of a protein. Missense mutations can be conservative or non-conservative based on the similarity of the new amino acid to the previous amino acid. This is important because if the new amino acid has chemical properties which are similar to the original amino acid, the protein will still be functional and the mutation will likely have no effect. This is called a conservative missense mutation. Sickle cell disease is the prototypical disease when talking about missense mutations because a single nucleotide change results in the exchange of glutamic acid to a valine. In the case of sickle cell, this would be a non-conservative mutation because glutamic acid and valine have different chemical properties. The resulting pro protein, in this case the beta globin protein, does not function and this results in the disease sickle cell anemia. Next, let's talk about nonsense mutations. Nonsense mutations occur when a single nucleotide change results in early termination of a protein. Nonsense mutations always result in proteins that are shorter and smaller than the original version. This occurs because a change in a single nucleotide produces a stop codon, such as UAG, UAA, and UGA. You need to be familiar with these stop codons for USMLE Step 1. So those are the major types of point mutations. Next we will talk about frame shifts mutations, which unlike point mutations occur due to either a deletion or addition of nucleotides. If the addition or deletion of nucleotides is not divisible by 3, this will result in loss of the reading frame. These type of mutations have devastating effect on protein function because the resulting protein has none of the physical properties of the original protein. Next we will talk about splice site mutations. A splice site mutation is any mutation that results in dysregulation of RNA splicing which is the process of removing the non-coding parts of RNA or introns. The process of RNA splicing depends on special DNA sequences that tell the spliceosome proteins where to splice. Interruption of these sequences can lead to dysfunctional splicing. 
Typically, these mut mutations will result in a protein that either lacks an exon, the coding part of RNA, or contains an extra intron, the non-coding part of RNA. The physical properties of these proteins are usually drastically different from those of the original, so these proteins are usually non-functional. Now we will shift gears from small mutations involving only a few nucleotides to large mutations involving thousands of nucleotides. As we mentioned before, large mutations tend to change the structure of chromosomes. Structural mutations typically occur during meiosis or mitosis and many have no consequences. There are various types of structural mutations such as translocations, inversions, deletions, duplication, etc. The most important type of structural mutations are translocations because they are involved in various human diseases. For this reason, we will talk about translocations for the rest of this lecture. Translocations occur when DNA is exchanged between chromosomes that are not of the same type. This is also known as non-homologous chromosomes. For example, exchange of DNA between chromosomes 6 and 16 would be considered a translocation. Translocations can be either balanced or unbalanced depending if the structural change results in a net loss or gain of DNA. For example, here we have two types of translocations. However, one of them is a balanced translocation and the other is unbalanced. So right here we have a chromosome 6 and a chromosome 16. The chromosome 16 is the blue and the chromosome 6 is red. We can see that a part of chromosome 16 is in chromosome 6 and vice versa, a part of chromosome 6 is in chromosome 16. This would be considered a balanced translocation because there's no net gain or loss of DNA. On the other hand, over here, we have a different kind of translocation. We can see that a part of chromosome 16, which is blue, is on chromosome 6. However, chromosome 6 is missing a piece and that piece is nowhere in the genotype. This would be called an unbalanced translocation because there is a net loss of DNA. We have lost a piece of chromosome 6. I also want to take this opportunity to familiarize you with the nomenclature used for structural mutations. So in the case of a translocation, you would write a T followed by an open parenthesis, the smaller number of the chromosome involved, followed by the larger number of the chromosome involved, and then the bands. So for example, this tells you that it is a translocation between chromosomes 8 and 14 and involving the bands Q28 and Q34. So in summary, the T stands for translocation, the second set of number stands for the chromosomes involved, and the last pair of number tells you which bands within the chromosomes. Translocations can lead to disease via three mechanisms. First, if a translocation is not balanced, this can lead to disease because either there will be missing DNA and therefore genes or DNA may be duplicated. Both cases can lead to disease. Balanced translocations usually do not produce issues because there is no change in DNA. It is important to recognize that the actual structure of the chromosomes is not really that important. What matters is if the correct amount of DNA is present. However, if a translocation interrupts a gene, this will lead to a dysfunctional protein and therefore disease, even if it is a balanced translocation. Last, a translocation may cause disease if it changes the regulatory elements of a gene. For example, let's look at Burkitt's lymphoma, which is a type of cancer that is caused by translocations between chromosomes 8 and 14. The NMIC gene located in chromosome 8 is a gene responsible for upregulating or increasing cell division. Expression of this gene is regulated by the NMIC promoter, which only allows expression of this gene occasionally when needed. The immunoglobulin heavy chain gene or IGH gene located in chromosome 14 codes for a protein found in immunoglobulins. The body is constantly producing immunoglobulins, so the promoter for this gene is always active, allowing for protein to always be made. When an 814 translocation occurs, the IGH promoter is relocated and effectively replaces the NMIC promoter. Since this promoter is programmed to always allow transcription, it will effectively always allow transcription of the NMIC gene. 
Since n mic increases cell division, this will increase cell division and lead to Burkitt's lymphoma, a type of neoplasia. So if we go over this image, we can see that both of these represent normal physiology. This is what's supposed to happen. This promoter, the IGH promoter, is always on. It's always allowing RNA polymerase to bind and make lots of IGH gene because it's always made. However, the INMIC promoter is not as liberal as the AGH promoter, so it's not always as active. It's only active certain times when needed. Therefore, NMIC is not made so frequently. However, when a translocation occurs, you get a transfer of promoters. So now, the IGH promoter, which is always on, is the promoter for the NMIC gene. So, a ton of NMIC will be made. However, we said that NMIC increases cell division. So excessive cell division is neoplasia, and this will lead to a type of neoplasia, in this case, Burkitt's lymphoma. And remember, this is considered a translocation because you have transfer of DNA between non-homologous chromosomes, in this case, between chromosomes 8 and 14. Another type of translocation you must also be familiar with is Robertsonian translocations, because there is a specific type of Robertsonian translocation that is associated with hereditary Down syndrome. First, a Robertsonian translocation is a type of translocation that occurs between acrocentric chromosomes. The acrocentric chromosomes are chromosomes 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22. They are called acrocentric because the centromere or the center of the chromosome is really close to one end of the chromosome. In a Robertsonian translocation, two acrocentric chromosomes become attached to each other. The Robertsonian translocation associated with hereditary Down syndrome is a 1421 translocation. In a 1421 Robertsonian translocation, a chromosome 14 becomes attached to a chromosome 21. It'll sort of look something like this, where the green is the chromosome 21 and the red is the chromosome 14. Normally, this is not an issue if the translocation is balanced, as in the example on the left. So, for example, the individual on the left still has 1 and 2 chromosome 21s. And they also have 1 and 2 chromosome 14s. So they have two copies of each chromosome, which is normal. However, people with a balanced 1421 Robertsonian translocation have a risk of having an offspring with the genotype on the right. So if we look on the genotype on the right, we can see that this individual has 1, 2, and 3 chromosomes 21. This is effectively a trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome. This is an example of an unbalanced Robertsonian translocation because you have a net gain of DNA. The reason that this occurs is because of the way that chromosomes are distributed during meiosis and gametogenesis. This is a very complicated process and you do not need to understand the chromosome segregation in people with a Robertsonian translocation. However, what I want you to remember is that people with a balanced 1421 Robertsonian translocation have a 5 to 15% risk of having an offspring with Down syndrome. So, if a patient has this genotype, they have a 5 to 15% chance of having a child with trisomy 21. So in summary, DNA mutations are classified based on size of the change in the DNA. Point mutations involve a single nucleotide change and can lead to silent mutations, missense mutations, nonsense mutations, or splice site mutations. Nucleotide deletions or additions not divisible by three produce frame shift mutations. Mutations involving thousands of nucleotides are called structural mutations and include translocations. Thank you for watching and see you on the next lecture.